Welcome to another episode of Forbidden Desires Podcast, Series 2, Say Sex. Today's guest is going to be a music guru. Now, I know you guys know that human sexuality and music go hand in hand. Well, if you don't, we're going to discuss it today. Please help me welcome Mr. Sir Love. So, this sounds better. Yes, that does. It sounds better. All right. Should I grab my B headphones so I look like I have the, the dorky computer headset or it's not that serious? It's not that serious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. Welcome. Welcome on. Um, we live. Okay. We live. We've been live oh, since, wow. you, since she was <laughs> since I've been struggling. Oh, wow. Hello, people. <laughs> Okay, so um, how do you like to be referred to? What's your name? Uh, so I go by Sir. Sir. But okay. everyone calls me Sir. Okay, so Sir, where are you from? I am from Atlanta, Georgia, Decatur. D- Decatur? Mm-hmm. Okay. And how do you identify? So what's your sexual orientation? For example, myself, I consider myself to be a pansexual female. How do you identify? Um, heterosexual male. Okay. And on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are you with saying the word sex or talking about the subject in general? With one being uncomfortable or very comfortable? One being uncomfortable and being okay. very comfortable. Uh, probably 9.5. 9.5. What's the point five? I, I just don't know what you're going to ask me. I got to protect <laughs> myself. <laughs> kind of leave a room with that point five question right there. Okay. 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 Well, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. And could you tell everybody, so what is your area of ex- expertise? What do you do? Uh, career wise? Yeah. Uh, So I am in entertainment and I'm in IT and I'm constantly for those two places bridge uh, and on the fringes of both. I do a lot of consulting with uh, independent artists, used to work with television shows and record uh, production and prints. Uh, Now I spend a lot of my time in the IT space working with major IT companies doing uh, similar consulting uh, um, uh, and general experts customer experiments, excellent things in nature. Well, eight. Okay, so your audio All is that. breaking up a little bit. So if you could just talk a little bit slower for us. A little bit slower. A little bit slower. So <laughs> IT consulting, music consulting, uh, bridging the two and sometimes being involved in IT and music projects uh, that uh, I'm consulting for spontaneously. Okay, so you're heavily involved in music then. Heavily involved in music, yes. So heavy that you consult people, yes? Yes. Okay, perfect. This is great. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sex then. How did you learn about sex? I did sex. Yeah, how did you learn about sex? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, I think I learned about sex. It, you know, just giggling and making jokes with your friends. Uh-huh. And so in school? Elementary school, probably okay. heard about it, but I prefer introduction is when my dad was like, hey, come here, son. Watch this. Popped in a, 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 a porno and was like, let me tell you what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction. That, you know what, that's more than most people get, so that, I mean, yeah. you know, it would would have been better if he had a a better tool to use to let you know about sex as a young child, but <laughs> that would have been nice. I, I mean, everyone has, you know, they're ready for the conversation. So I guess uh, sometimes the best way to have it is just to have it. Right. Okay. All right. So, how, how, what, or what role does sexuality pe- play in music, in your opinion? Uh, sexuality plays a huge role in music just because different sexualities in music you know um you're going to run into every type of sexual entity in entertainment many of which are there to you know sexual desires or sexual orientation uh uh so you you know you 
to grow the corporate side of music, you need to be very comfortable with different types of, of sexual individuals. Okay, so are you saying like the artist themselves has to be comfortable? The artist, the manager, the executive, anyone who wants to move in the, in the corporate side of it, right? I mean, there's the rock and roll side of it, the fun and, and, and going out and partying and this the third. And, you know, that's really the artist realm most of the time, but it can be in from managers can get into that, and can get into that. That side to you as your own personal experiences, right? I guess it depends on how many, how, how many lines and, and shots and how many, you know, sweet smoke you got in your decisions. I think on the corporate okay, side, so, you're really dealing with so then, so so, would you say that uh, we're being taught two two separate sets of values, one as artists and then one as the rest of the world, as as far as you know, when it comes to, to sexuality? Yes. Yes. Because you tell the, you tell the artist, okay, you're in, or anybody that's in music, pretty much, you need to be comfortable with sexuality, and you know, in its broadest form but then we teach regular individuals um to shun their sexuality to not embrace it to get rid of it no i i think we think i think we teach the corporate leader on the business side to accept and embrace sexuality because you have to work with so many diverse people i don't mm -hmm. think we push that upon the artist uh sometimes an artist being a homophobic individual may actually more right um or it may deter their fans i think on that side we're just in or whatever is going to be most viable to the, what's going to drive more money right uh, perspective i think there's an ongoing push for acceptance mm -hmm. uh, but i don't think that communities that the marketing is presenting you don't That's think that think. communities what you broke up there all right are accepting that that push Okay, so okay, so you're saying that it's more the execs that are more open with sexuality than than any of the other people in in the realm of music. They're the ones that need to be more open. There are some artists. I mean, you get you get you know. This, I don't want to throw names. But you mm -hmm. Get some artists that are just really, comfortable, you know, in the music yeah, industry. You know, this really what comfortable with different sexual you know experiences I mean, there are parties where everyone comes naked right so mm -hmm. you know you have to be completely comfortable with your body it's not even a sexual thing per se to to be comfortable in that space uh so it's just different it's different strokes for different folks different environments and spaces okay and so how are the executives you said that they need to learn to be more open how are they learning to be more open like are there classes they take or you know like it's just something i don't i don't think so i think I think you learn from respectful and then of course sometimes that motives help. So if you want to win with an artist and that artist is open to gay. So if you're someone that represents or works with, right, you're going to go through, you don't want to lose your client. They came mm -hmm. out gay. You probably have a relationship with them already. You probably knew it. You're going to do some exploring. You know, I worked extensively with the, with the uh, artist that was uh, lesbian. No, she might've been more things than just a lesbian, but she was bi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found myself in many different clubs and environments and around so many gay people and I had to naturally make that adjustment and learn and so business side you know me these spaces is important to make this project go where I want it so uh, it forced me to become more accepting of okay. the environment and learn about it right so it's really just an individual basis of, okay, this is what I know. I need. I'm not sure how to do it, but I, I know I need to accept this person. So there's, you know, there's no real. Yeah. Like, and executives are going to deal with this that. Is the, this is what you follow in order to become more accepting. You don't have there's nothing. Like you just, you figure it out because you deal with artists of, of, of people, right? Executive managers and booking it business side deal with a lot of people so you have to learn because you are going to come in contact with these people i mean otherwise your artists would never you know, their fashion would gay or the makeup kind of, or what? You know, what was the last, what was that their, last? Their, their outfits would never be on point because many of the stylists are gay or the makeup people are gay. Are gay. some of the producers you know so you you, you can't split there you learn to accept everybody
So you would say, but with that comment, though, you would say that people's sexualities come out through their expression, whether they're the makeup artist or the wardrobe person or whatever. Say that again. So would you say that that sexuality, the expression of people's sexuality comes out through their work, whether it's the makeup artist or the the art, the, the you know, the music artist or whatever, whoever. And sometimes what you want. Say it again. Want, sometimes that is you want both perspectives. Sometimes mm-hmm. you want, you know, if you're if you're dressing a male artist, you may want a, you know, not to be prejudiced and say I only want a gay male to to be the stylist, but you may guy that understands women want a little more and may also understand how it needs to look on a guy's body like they bring a different perspective i think they have a competitive advantage innately because they spend much time doing discovery being open that they can bring that value that intangible value to uh, unique ways i think that's how it plays a role without you know without okay, well, you talking about the front the reason i the reason i say that is because i think that it's important for to understand that sexuality uh, is a part of your identity. It's not something that yes. you shun and suppress and push away and deal with another day. It's something that's very, um, very present every day of every second of any decision that you're making because you're making it from that perspective. I agree. Yeah. 100%. Okay, so what, what is one thing as it pertains to music and sexuality that you wish would change in the music business? I wish that we felt just as comfortable pushing artists that were not sexual as we did artists that are, especially uh, female artists. That is Uh, a great point because asexuality is a part of, it's a part of the spectrum. Okay, I agree. Yeah, so that and, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, it's, it, I think um, there's so much you that could be expressed uh, in other ways in sexuality. The marketplace right now, you think of what rap is doing uh, as a as a hip hop female artist, and it's it's a, it's dope, it's amazing, um, and there's not support on a lot of things that she does um and there, but there's been artists in the past that fit that box and i believe that there are a lot of young women that have really dope music uh but since the quote unquote look they may not get the the opportunity to look for and i think that we need to fix that at some point yeah well i think you know everybody understand that sex sales which is probably why they're pushing it so hard i think that we had artists who were who were willing to well, you know bigger name artists who are willing to take that route I think that it would work out just great I think it would set the bar I think people would have an opportunity like they never had before you know like any person who was the first of their to do what they do I agree there's a there's a space there somebody has to someone brave has to fill it right okay so here is, well, before we get to that, what is one, one message or one thing that you would want the audience to know? Something you want to convey to them for them to take away? About sexuality or about? Anything, anything like maybe your personal message that you have? Uh, my personal message that I want everyone to take away is that greatness is a journey and it's not a that's an external and internal journey of attempting to be the best version of yourself in everything you do every day. And that on some level, all of us should be aspiring to that. I agree. That's, I don't know. You said it perfectly. That's <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. You're welcome. All right. Here's the part in the interview where you get to ask me one question. What you got? One question? One question. One question. Mm-hmm. Okay. So being an expert, uh, being a what? Is being an expert mm-hmm. in sexual, in various sexual related, uh, what is the most story that you've come across so far personally? What's the most what? 
interesting sexually related story that you've come up with? Oh, interesting. Mm. I think the most interesting story that I came across, I mean, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, most interesting. Okay, so the most interesting story that I ever came across was when someone <clears throat> told me that they had their first threesome, their first encounter was completely unscripted, didn't even know what was going to happen. They walked into fucking. <laughs> oh, Let's back it up. Okay, so you know uh-huh. those porn, <laughs> you know those porn, um, those pornos that start with the, the person coming in to 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 do a service call. <laughs> yeah, nineties <90s> joint, <laughs> early two thousands, baggy jean joint, tank top. About. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so all right, so the guy he goes in and. He follows the wife to the next room. He notices that the wife is wearing a little skimpy clothes than, than, than usual. And um, so then she takes him over to the fridge, asks him if he wants anything. She, she proceeds to bend over and he's like, she ain't wearing no panties. <laughs> <laughs> the husband <laughs> is in the room. And, um, and He's like, yeah, go ahead. So yeah, that, it just went down like that, and that was yeah. just that was that's the strangest story I have ever heard because it's like, I mean, a lot of a lot of encounters, a lot of people like that, that do that sort of thing. They run in packs, you know. So you're gonna really run into somebody that does something that you don't really do, you know. If if, if you're if you're a couple and you're swinging, you know. You right. Know, swingers. Well, this was, this was person was not even a swinger. They were single too. It was just like super random. I don't know. I just thought it was strange. Wow. That's interesting. So question for you. Do you, well, I got to get one question. Go oh, ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What you got? You, you called that a threesome. And so do you, so there's a debate. Is threesome only considered two women and one guy? Is two guys and one, and one threesome still? So I I consider a threesome any sexual activity. So it doesn't matter if you're actually involved or not. If okay, I call it a threesome. If you're taking any pleasure from that experience, it's a threesome. Up in the corner doing your thing while someone else is getting it in. That's still a threesome. Yes, still a threesome. In my in my opinion, I don't know about anybody else's, but in my opinion, wow, interesting. Because you could. Because you, because someone could consider that cheating, right? The line between is, is huh? it could be very thin or very thick, depending on who you're. Uh, exactly. Your so, partner this, is. Yeah. so the, the the idea that it could even be considered cheating, I just don't throw it in the boat. Don't throw it in. There. <laughs> okay. okay in so the boat. I understand that's valid. What at what? products or services or um, like projects you, are you working on currently that you want the audience to know about? Uh, so currently I am uh, someone that's in entertainment or that knows someone in entertainment or that aspiring to be in entertainment. We did a platform called P-H-A-S-E-V-I.com. Say that again. P-H-A-S-E, as in Victor, I as in Igloo.com. Uh, but we are now doing audio books, the previous uh, info packs that we have on the site. So for anyone that wants to learn how to see in the business of music, I encourage you to go to this and get the original books uh, and get ready because the audio books are going to be dropped. Okay. So you have a website where you have products on there that um, they're, they're books and it's for anybody who is wanting to learn about the music industry. Yep. The business in particular. And we're business, breaking down. Okay, the business yes. portion of okay. And uh, what's the website again? Phase six p h a s e v i dot com. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate that. No problem. 
And how can we find you aside from the website? Are you on the intranets? Uh, yeah, so I am on Instagram at uh, phase vi underscore six, the number six. And it, that is probably the best place to find me online. I know I have some other tags, but I you work too what? much social tags, but I'm probably not active on there. Um, and then I always tell people to shoot me a text. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a busy guy. I'm, so if you shoot me a text, you'll shoot me quicker. So that's 442-4792. Okay. Say the number again. 404-442-4792. Answer questions and, and help people in their career and they reach out to me. Uh, and that's just one of the other things that we do with Phase 6. Okay, give that number to us one more time. 404-442-4792. But hold up, you're an artist. So I am, I am an artist. So here's, here's a challenge for you, on the spot challenge. Are you ready? Ooh. Okay, what you got? Okay, okay, turn that into a jingle. Turn what into for a jingle? Audience. What? Turn into a jingle for your audience real quick. You said make one? Make a jingle of the phone number. Oh, ooh. oh okay. Ooh. What's what's the number? Oh God! You look. Yeah. Right Let's now. do it. <laughs> Have some fun. Okay. What's what's the number? Four. Four four. Four, two, four zero. Four zero four. Four four two. Four four two. Four seven nine two. Four seven nine. Four zero four 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 two four seven eight two four seven two four seven eight two nine nine two two yes <laughs> here we go okay four zero four 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 two four seven nine two <laughs> yep okay um <laughs> uh if you if you're looking for music <laughs> if you're looking for music business to get into call 404-442-4792 yeah <laughs> <Yay. laughs> oh my god okay so that's going to conclude our interview <laughs> <laughs> if I can stop laughing long enough thanks so much uh sir thank you so much for coming on I really appreciate it um thanks for stopping by um so before you go you have to say it we need you to tell everybody that it's okay to say it is okay to say sex thank you <laughs> all right well, until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was really great. Like, so good. Thank you so much, Mr. Sir Love. Yes, I said Mr. Sir Love. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by and giving us the lowdown on sexuality and music. Please make sure that you're staying tuned to all of the episodes that are coming out. Go ahead and go over to that Instagram page, forbidden underscore desires with an S underscore podcast and check out any of the latest episodes and anything that you may have missed. I will see you next time. Bye. And remember, it's okay to say sex. <laughs> <laughs>